So the title of this talk is called Time to Publish. Um, sorry, I was going to start a timer there. Uh, the title of this talk is Time to Publish. Uh, my name is Bradley Jacobs. Uh, my Twitter handle is Crazy Jaco. It's my last name without the BS. Thank you for laughing. Um, and that's my work email. So let's talk a little bit about me. Um, I'm older than I look. I am a child of the 80s. So apologies in advance for uh, any and all 80s references in this talk. Um, I have an unhealthy obsession with the Transformers franchise. Uh, and I have a framed picture of Skeletor on my desk at work. Uh, I feel like this sums me up pretty well. Um, I've been working with WordPress for over 10 years now. Uh, professionally, I've worked at several different agencies, uh, one of which happened to be a WordPress.com VIP partner. So I have a bit of an appreciation for best practices and coding standards. I currently work for Boston Globe Media. I am a lead developer, um, and I serve as the lead for our consumer revenue team. I also serve in uh, kind of a consulting role with the other two product and engineering teams, kind of helping them out with architectural decisions, largely centering around Word <coughs> WordPress. So today, I'm here to tell you a story in four parts. Part one, make it big. Let's talk a little bit about Boston.com. Uh, to many, Boston.com is kind of a big deal. It's a bit of an institution. Uh, it's also one of those rare sites that can say it's actually been around for over 20 years. Not many sites can say that. And we've certainly come a long way in web design since then. Uh, Boston.com is not just a news site. It's a real estate site. It's a car site. It's a guide on how to Boston. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of sites. And right now, all but bostonglobe.com run on WordPress. The team cut their teeth, so to speak, on getting some of these sites up on WordPress to understand the best practices and the architecture of the ecosystem. Last year, here at WordCamp, two of the developers I work with, Greg Opperman, Ellen Bewall, they gave a presentation on the Boston.com architecture and implementation. Now, I'd advise those who are curious to check that talk out on WordPress.tv. Um, and since that's already been covered, I'm going to fast forward a bit to after we launched on WordPress. So Boston.com has a very loyal following. Part of that is due to the amount of regularly changing content. The more articles editorial can publish, the more fresh content there is for users to come back to. We have actually seen noticeable dips in traffic when we publish below our average rate. As a result, it is extra crucial that we remove as many obstacles for our editorial team as possible. They need to be treated just as important as our readers, if not more so. This is why we care about time to publish as a metric. Chapter 2, Get Nervous. So on March 30th, 2017, Boston.com editorial team submitted a JIRA ticket for slowness in the admin. Now, hitting update on the homepage edit screen was taking over 60 seconds to return. Searching for stories to slot on the, on the front page was taking 30 to second, 
30 to 60 seconds for each search. Now, they actually touched base with us first, and we told them to file a ticket with our ops group. They handle the servers and the networks. We honestly didn't think it was a problem with the code base. We hadn't had any major releases or large features deployed recently. We also do code reviews for any and all code changes. The other reason was that Ops had just migrated the WordPress instances to a new data center two days earlier. As some of you may have heard, after nearly 60 years of operation in our Dorchester plant, we moved back into the heart of downtown Boston last month. We happen to have an on-site data center, though, in Dorchester. So the move downtown required us to move all of our servers to a new data center co-location facility. Um, now, the timing was just too close for us to think that the slowness was caused by anything other than that. So why don't we start a little bit of a timeline to help us keep track. And as we already covered, we cut over to the new data center on March 28th, and Editorial submitted that support ticket on March 30th. Ops got back to us pretty quickly and let us know that the network latency we were told to expect should not be causing uh, performance this bad. They took a look at the database server and let us know it had uh, a number of long-running queries. Aha. So, our database was finally showing its size. Now, by the time they had gone back to us, the issues had worsened. In response, I created a dev ticket and asked them for a copy of the production database and the slow queries log from our MariaDB. There we go. Um, if I was going to investigate this properly, I needed to be working on a database as the, on the same scale. Now, as it happened, uh, we realized that one of the other teams in the product and engineering group were uh, actually migrating the rest of the content off of our legacy CMS. Uh, so we could just shut it off and not have to move it to the new data center. But they were importing this into WordPress. And I would not find out until I was actually putting this presentation together just how big those imports were. About 40%. We grew the database by about 40%. Over 150,000 records were added to the posts table, bringing it to over 550,000 records. In the post meta table, we were now sitting at over 3 million records. Chapter three, private eyes. Let's talk a bit about the investigation and some of the tools I used. So, here we are with a much larger database feeling some growing pains. There are, these are very good problems to have. Uh, we're growing, we have a lot of traffic, and now we have new problems to solve. And for me, this was kind of my dream ticket. Uh, a lot of developers are good at different things. Some are great at uh, implementing new features or refactoring code. Um, for me, uh, I'm a debugger. I live in other people's code, and I'm really stubborn. <clears throat> now, I needed a plan of attack. To start, we set up weekly meetings with editorial. <clears throat> the product manager, myself, and the editor of Boston.com sat down and went over the progress of the previous week, and they let us and they let us know about what issues were impacting them the most. Again, there were plenty of areas to focus, but we needed to make sure our priority uh, lied in reducing their time to publish. 
is I worked on one issue. Sometimes I would find a much larger issue elsewhere. This meant I needed to put that down and pick up the second issue. So needless to say, I had a lot of branches and version control. The important thing here, though, is that I was trying to focus on areas that made the biggest difference and not waste time fighting for milliseconds when something else was taking minutes. So, oops. Um, so I used a, a variety of widely available tools to ferret out the worst of the worst. The first of those tools is uh, a tool called LAPS. This is a lightweight visual WordPress profiler written by um, Andrzej Savchenko. Uh, some of you know him better as Rust. Um, LAPS adds a button in the admin bar. And if you hover over it, it shows you three bars that represent the time sequence of the page load. The top bar represents um, the asset, <coughs> excuse me, the assets that load on the page, the JavaScript, the CSS, and the images. The middle bar is for visually uh, representing the queries that were used um, ge in generating the page. The bottom bar represents external HTTP requests. Hovering on any of the slices in the bar will show you a pop-up with what specific asset, query, or request, uh, uh, which that was. It's a great at-a-glance view of the entire sequence of events during page load. Now, one of the most helpful tools to me was the debug bar WordPress plugin. Um, as you can see, it adds another little button to the admin bar. Now, this will only really be as useful as it can be if you have these two constants defined in your WP config. Otherwise, you won't get its full functionality. But as you can see, it adds a button to the uh, admin bar, that debug, right where that arrow is pointing. And when you click on that button, these animations might be slightly out of sequence. They're not starting at the beginning for whatever reason, but just bear that in mind. Uh, when you click on the button, it reveals an overlay with several different sections. The section on the left is a menu of each of the panels that are available. The one we care about today uh, most is the queries panel, which is what you see here. <laughs> um, it shows you the total elapsed time and the total number of queries at the top. Um, and below that, you see that uh, you see each query that was run during the page load, the amount of time it took, and the stack trace. These three pieces of information were critical to my investigation, but there was just one problem. You can't sort the queries by elapsed time. They just show an order of execution. And you can see here there are 562 queries that run on this page, which is another issue. But uh, I, I can't sit there and scroll through 562 queries to figure out which one takes the longest. So enter debug bar queries plus. Um, I wrote this uh, because I had a need. And uh, I basically copied the code for the entire queries panel uh, from the base debug bar plugin and created a new panel called Queries Plus. All I did was add a dropdown for sorting by elapsed time and by execution order. In addition, I bumped the font size because I really wanted that uh, elapsed time to stand out. I was really worried about the sunk time that I spent on this, but it turned out to be the most valuable tool I ended up using and will continue to use uh, for this type of debugging. Excuse me.
So if you're frustrated by a lack of information in your debugging tools, don't be afraid to create your own. Your needs will often be different than a generic use case that this was built for. <clears throat> um, so I also use the debug bar console, which is another extension for the debug bar plugin. Uh, basically, it adds another panel that will let you run PHP and SQL queries in the same way that you can run JavaScript in your browser's console. Now, I largely use this plugin by taking an offending query from the queries panel and tweaking it here in different ways to really understand what it was doing and what parts of it were so non-performant. Um, now, there are a few downsides to this plugin. Obviously, you can put in arbitrary code or queries that can do whatever. So only use this locally and use with caution. Um, there's also no indicator when a search is running or in progress. And some of the queries that I had that are really non-performant and were taking a long time, I would click run and then really question myself if I really clicked run. Um, so there was a lot of self-doubt there because of bad kind of user experience. Uh, similarly, when the results are turned, there's no indication of how long it took to run. I was using a stopwatch to get an approximate time. In my case, the queries were bad enough that they didn't need real precise numbers. And finally, this is an old plugin with no real updates since, uh, since it was made. And the maintainer is no longer active in the community. Uh, I don't know if ownership was transferred uh, or not, but likely it, it hasn't. And uh, so just bear that in mind if you decide to use this plugin. Chapter four, I ran with it. So I'm going to try and take you a little bit through my process here. Um, this is the edit post screen for our site. I've reverted to the version of WordPress here back to 4.7.5 and removed my code changes so you can see uh, some of what it was like. I've also preloaded the screen in this animation so you don't have to sit through the page load. Now, take notice, this screen took over 50 seconds just to run the queries. Sorting by elapsed time there you go, um, shows us, uh, shed some light on those numbers. If we look at the top three queries, we can see that the lion's share of the page load is just from those. Taking a look at the stack traces, we can see the first and the third queries actually have the same stack trace. And the last function called is WPNQ Media. So it's not entirely unfair to say that this is probably being called by the media library. Now, due diligence, before I started code diving, I did a quick search on the query to see what would come up. Remember, Google is your friend. Um, sure enough, I came across an, exi an existing track ticket for WordPress core. It explained exactly what was happening in some proposed fixes. So what was happening? Why was it making such a non-performant query? Well, it was checking to see if there were any media files so it could conditionally display the create audio playlist or the create video playlist buttons in the media library. Now, on our site, the audio lookup was taking 13 and a half seconds. The video lookup was taking 18 and a half seconds. A patch was made in the ticket slated for 474. The timing for us worked out because when I discovered this, 474 was only about a, a week away from release. So we were very lucky. Um, the two filters that were added as part of the patch allowed us some control on how to display these buttons. In 474, the filter defaulted to null and would continue with the existing behavior, but because it's a filter, we could override it. In 48, 
the filter defaulted to true to always show the media playlist buttons and completely skip the queries. The reason the default value did not change until 4.8 was because this was considered a behavioral change. And behavioral changes should not happen on minor releases. Those are reserved for security fixes and bug fixes. Behavioral changes should only happen on major releases. Since the default value is now true in 4.8, this change is no longer necessary. All right, so that eliminates two of our three worst defenders on the post edit screen. So let's have another look to see our progress. Okay, down to one nine and a half second query. According to the stack trace, this is from a custom meta box. Meta form, huh? All right, well, I have some ideas about that, but before we get too deep, again, let's do, just do a quick Google search on part of that, that query, um, just as due diligence. And sure enough, we have an existing track ticket for this. Uh, it's still open and looking for a resolution to the query itself, but in the meantime, a patch was merged, adding a filter to short circuit the issue. So what was the issue here? The drop down in the custom fields meta box. The offending query tries to get all of the unique values from the post meta table and just get back the first 30. Now, keep in mind, I mentioned earlier that we were sitting at over 3 million records in the post meta table. So it was actually scanning the entire table looking for unique keys to populate that box with. The kicker? Editorial doesn't even use that. Um, unfortunately, we, the developers, do use it from time to time for troubleshooting uh, issues on individual posts. So we couldn't just disable it entirely on the post type. The patch that was merged from the ticket allows us to skip the query from being run entirely, leaving the field to default to an input box. So here's the fix for that. Uh, it's very similar to the previous fixes. Of course, remember to comment your code for the next developer, pay it forward. But again, we're just uh, overriding the filter with a false value. Now, more often than not, problems you encounter will not be in core. They'll be in plugins or themes that somebody else wrote. This is the homepage edit screen for boston.com. Each of these central meta boxes um, control a zone that we can slot specific posts in. Now, our previous two issues were affecting this screen uh, as well, and removing those improved things, but it's still taking a while to load. So let's take a look. Uh, just take note of that drop down for a second. So we're going to head back into our Queries Plus panel and sort by lapse time. Uh, it looks like it already did that. So we've sorted. Um, now, the page itself back up, is taking over 30 seconds to load uh, after we reduced, uh, after we removed those previous issues. We can see here that the top two uh, queries are taking up most of that time. But in fact, the top five queries are actually all being called this, by the same code um, and are all almost identical. So let's take a closer look at one of those queries. This is the first and longest running of those queries. This is used to populate that dropdown you saw on the previous slide, where we select a post to slot in the zone. This looks innocent enough at first glance, but if uh, Anyone with any WordPress.com VIP experience will see a big flaw. 
That not in operation is a big no-no. Um, exclusion is a very expensive operation on the database when working with very large data sets. So to fix this, we have to understand the purpose of the query and the exclusion. That query populates the dropdown. As a safety measure, it excludes the currently slotted posts from what is returned. This lessens the possibility of a post from being slotted twice in the same well. The solution here was just to strip out that not in clause from the query. Once the query returns, I strip out the posts in the PHP. The downside to this is that I now have a variable number of posts in the dropdown, but in the end, it's worth the performance gain. There will always be trade-offs when fighting for performance gains, and it's up to you to understand the underlying problem to determine if the benefit is worth it. So with that, one more check shows us that we're just under a second of elapsed time, just over a second of uh, elapsed query time. Um, this is a much better place to be. It'd be nice to get it lower than that, but there are other areas that need focus. Epilogue, business as usual. So the debugging was uh, a vital part of this work, but there are things that require attention going forward. First, our teams need to communicate more and they need to communicate better. We knew the other team was doing data imports for the migration, but no one paid attention to how big they were. Generally, when we develop, we work with a virtually empty database. We're now working to incorporate a much larger data dump for use during development to try and weed out these performance issues. We also use the ElasticPress plugin for integration with Elasticsearch on front-end queries. I'm now working on adding some support for that for our, the, for our admin side of things. And finally, the most important thing here is to have an open channel with your users and content creators and understanding their needs and their pain points. Their ability to publish and publish quickly is paramount. The homepage edit screen that we looked at earlier was suffering from all of the issues we looked at today. It was taking over 90 seconds to load in some cases. Think about that. That's not just 90 seconds of page load time. That page is updated 40 to 50 times a day. That makes 4,500 seconds or 75 minutes. Over an hour a day. Over the course of a week, we save them an entire work's day worth of time. But our work here is not yet done. This is an ongoing battle. To close out, I just want to say site, performing, site performance metrics are nothing more than a snapshot in time. It often looks like a finished product because you hit a certain KPI or metric. But if you look at the grander scale, you see a great deal of ebb and flow uh, between the order and the chaos, or in our case, the speed and the lag. Your performance metrics are not the end. They are just the beginning of a larger story. Thank you. So I think we have some time for questions. Questions? Have you implemented it? Have you added Elasticsearch yet in real life? The question was, have we added Elasticsearch in real life? The answer is yes, we have. And that helps us on the front end. Um, the ElasticPress plugin manages uh, the integration with Elasticsearch, but it only, work, uh, it only covers uh, the front end queries. It does not support uh, admin queries or AJAX queries. 
Slight caveat, we're a couple of versions behind on the ElasticPress plugin. Uh, that may have changed since then. Um, but we are, uh, we have an active investigation to, uh, right now, to upgrade that. And um, the coverage in the ElasticPress plugin covers a lot of common um, query clauses. Uh, so yes, on the front end, we do use Elasticsearch. Yep. Is there a reason that you forked the plugin for WP Debug Bar instead of that making an add on to it? I knew someone would ask that question. The question was why did I fork the Debug Bar plugin instead of doing a pull request? The answer is time. Um, I, I have not had time to make the considerations of how to make changes to my changes to a point where it could be pull, put back in. Um, and I haven't done that kind of investigation yet. I needed a tool immediately, and so um, I forked the plugin to, to do the work I needed. Um, after that, after that work is completed, which it's just about there, um, then I'm going to clean that up and see how I can contribute back. Um, I'm also working uh, on extending the ElasticPress debug bar plugin as well. Question? Yeah. Oh. I was going to say, um, you mentioned that the, the not in query was a fairly obvious thing to you having had some VIP you know, experience. Yes. Um, if, you know, if there's some of us who are less familiar with PhD or with database queries in general, are there any good resources that you would recommend for common gotchas like that? Um, that's a great question. The, the WordPress.com VIP coding standards are actually available and online. Um, and that's a great place to start. Um, that is definitely listed in there, along with some uh, a, a number of other things. They have to take those sorts of things into consideration very strictly uh, because of their setup on a multi-site. So any code that gets added not only affects that the code, uh, not only affects the, the that site, but also all other sites on that multi-site instance. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, um, to me, the most fascinating part of the problem is all fascinating. Uh, can you use the mic? I can't really hear you. I'm sorry. Sure. Sorry about that. So, to, uh, to me, the most fascinating part about that talk was seeing what your WPN implications look like. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm wondering how much of that was custom development versus mm -hmm. off the shelf plugins. And, where do you see potentially the bigger performance issues? Do you, when, is when you write it yourself, or is when you do something that uh, maybe is the status product? Um, I want to be careful what I say. Uh, <laughs> because a lot of plugins just can't be tested on a, on a lot. A lot of plugins aren't really meant for enterprise scale databases. Um, they just haven't been tested for that. So we have run into a number of issues with a number of different third-party plugins. Uh, and we've either weeded them out and uh, replaced them with uh, you know, in-house built solutions, or we forked them. Um, yeah. That, that's pretty much what we've done so far. Um, and you know, we, we still run into issues from time to time with, with uh, one or two third-party plugins that are left. But a great majority of our, our uh, code base is all done in-house. Yes, sir? Have there been any hardware tricks you've used to make your database um, well, <clears throat> we do run on MariaDB, um, and we use a Galera cluster. Um, there are certain advantages to that setup. 
uh, you can't do necessarily a Galera cluster in straight MySQL. Um, offhand, I can't remember what those advantages are, um, but that is something we've done. Yes, sir? Can you use the mic? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, real briefly, I can just say that uh, you know we we have an entire an entire Jenkins is instance dedicated to cron jobs, and uh, we have many cron jobs set up to clean our WordPress database um, for several things. In some cases, uh, things like uh, associated press articles. Excuse me. We um, we have those auto importing to WordPress, and uh, so that they're there and ready for our editorial team to either make quick edits to, or just hit publish. And it again, it reduces their time to publish, right? So we do that on the front end. Uh, I mean. We do that in the back end, but we up we up front that work for them, and then uh, anything older than 14 days gets cleaned out. Um, there is some maintenance as far as transients go as well. We run into issues with that, but uh, I ran out of time. So thank you for your questions. Um, enjoy the rest of your WordCamp. <laughs>